Hey Krishna, my dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in the live studios in Hyde, Kent, Southeast England, just near, near the English Channel. Uh, I'm trying to create a haven uh, whereby we spend some time out of time. Huh? Spend a little time out of time and space and associate with Krishna um, putting everything in the proper perspective now there are so many useless concocted uh, difficulties and conflicts and everyone's into it the latest uh, conspiracy theory about something or other so let's hear the Bhagavatam and at least for this hour or so every day uh, absorb ourselves in hearing transcendental sound Shabda Brahma and being with Krishna in the most meaningful way that pleases him the most hearing about him without argument without uh, confusion uh, just hearing about him uh, through the lips of uh, a pure devotee of Krishna, our dear Srila Prabhupada. Okay. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram from Sri Krishna Lila Stava by Srila Sanatan Goswami glorifies the Bhagavatam puts the atmosphere in the proper perspective, proper mood. goes like this. Sarva shastrabdipi yusha, sarva vedaika satpala, sarva siddhanta ratnaja, sarva lokaika drikprada. O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems, of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kalidvandotita Aditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshakshadaya Te Sarvadasa Vasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna. Himself. Madeka bando matsangin madguro man mahadana man nistadagamad bhagya mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadu ta dayin atini chochata kada hanamun chagada chin mam prem na rit kantayaks para. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya All right, we've reached the third chapter of the first uh, canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and Sutta Goswami is going to 
answer the, the question or the request of the sages in Naimisharanya forest who have gathered there to perform a thousand year sacrifice for the benefit of human society and the world in general. Uh, and now he's about to enter into the, well he has entered into the description of the major incarnations of Krishna. Of course, Krishna has unlimited incarnations and expansions, but these are the most important ones in the history of this universe, which the Bhagavatam is, Srimad Bhagavatam. It's the history of the universe. Text 7. The supreme enjoyer of all sacrifices accepted the incarnation of a boar, a second incarnation, and for the welfare of the earth, he lifted the earth from the nitha regions of the universe. Purport. The indication is that for each and every incarnation of the personality of Godhead, the particular function executed is mentioned. There cannot be any incarnation without a particular function. And such functions are always extraordinary. They are impossible for any living being to perform. The incarnation of a boar was to take the earth out of Pluto's region of filthy matter. Picking up something from a filthy place is done by a boar. And the all-powerful personality of Godhead displayed this wonder to the Asuras who had hidden the earth in such a filthy place. There is nothing impossible for the personality of Godhead and although he played the part of a boar by the devotees he has worshipped staying always in transcendence. Text 8 In the millennium of the Rishis the personality of Godhead accepted the third empowered incarnation in the form of Devarshi Narada, who was a great sage among the demigods. He collected expositions of the Vedas which deal with devotional service and which inspire non-fruitive action. Purport. The great Rishi Narada, who was an empowered incarnation of the personality of Godhead, propagates <coughs> devotional service all over the universe. All great devotees of the Lord all over the universe and in different planets and species of life are his disciples. Srila Vyasadeva, the compiler of the Srimad Bhagavatam, is also one of his disciples. Narada is the author of the Narada Pancharatra, which is which is the exposition of the Vedas, particularly for the devotional service of the Lord. This Narada Pancharatra trains the karmis, or the fruitive workers, to achieve liberation from the bondage of fruitive work. The conditioned souls are mostly attracted by fruitive work because they want to enjoy life by the sweat of their own brows. The whole universe is full of fruitive workers in all species of life. The fruitive workers include all kinds of economic development plans. The fruitive works include all kinds of economic development plans. But, but the law of nature provides that every action has its resultant reaction. And the performer of the work is bound up by such reactions, good or bad. The reaction of good work is comparative material prosperity, whereas the reaction of bad work is comparative material distress. But material conditions, either in so-called happiness or in so-called distress, are all meant ultimately for distress only. Foolish materialists have no information of how to obtain eternal happiness in the, un, in the conditional state, 
in the unconditional state. I'll read that again. Foolish materialists have no information of how to obtain eternal happiness in the unconditional state. Sri Narada informs these foolish fruitive workers how to realize the reality of happiness. He gives direction to the diseased men of the world how, to, how one's present engagement can lead one to the path of spiritual emancipation. The physician directs the patient to take treated milk in the form of yogurt for his sufferings from indigestion due to his taking another milk preparation. So the cause of the disease and the remedy of the disease may be the same, but it must be treated by an expert physician like Narada. The Bhagavad Gita also gives the same solution of serving the Lord by one's fruit, by the fruits of one's labor. That will lead one to the path of nice karma or liberation. Text 9. In the fourth incarnation, the Lord became Nara and Narayana, the twin sons of the wife of King, King Dharma. Thus he undertook severe and exemplary penances to control the senses. Purport. As King Rishab, as King Rishaba advised his sons, tapasya or voluntary acceptance of penance for realization of the transcendence is the only duty of the human being. It was so done by the Lord Himself in an exemplary manner to teach us. The Lord is very kind to the forgetful souls. He therefore comes Himself and leaves behind necessary instructions and also sends His good sons as representatives to call all the conditioned souls back to Godhead. Recently, within the memory of everyone, Lord Chaitanya also appeared for the same purpose, to show special favor to fallen souls of this age of iron industry. The incarnation of Narayana is worshipped still at Badari Narayana on the range of the Himalayas. Text 10 The fifth incarnation, named Lord Kapila, is foremost among perfected beings. He gave an exposition of the creative elements and metaphysics to Asuri Brahmana, for in course of time this knowledge had been lost. Purport The sum total of the creative elements is 24 in all. Each and every one of them is explicitly explained in the system of Sankhya philosophy. Sankhya philosophy is generally called metaphysics by the European scholars. The etymological meaning of Sankhya is that which explains very lucidly by analysis of the material elements. This was done for the first time by Lord Kapila, who is said herein to be the fifth in the line of incarnation. Text 11. The sixth incarnation of the Purusha was the son of the sage Atri. He was born from the womb of Anasuya, who prayed for an incarnation. He spoke on the subject of transcendence to Alarka, Prahlad, and others, Yadu, Haihaya, etc. Purport. The Lord indicated. Uh, the Lord incarnated himself as Dattatreya, the son of the Rishi Atra, Atri and Anasuya. The history of the birth of Dattatreya as an incarnation of the Lord is mentioned in the Brahmananda Purana. I'm sorry. <clears throat> the history of the birth of Dattatreya as an incarnation of the Lord is mentioned in the Ramanda Purana. 
in connection with the story of the devoted wife. It is said there that Anusuya, the wife of Rishi Atri, prayed before the lords Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva as follows, My lords, if you are pleased with me, and if you desire me to ask from you some sort of blessings, then I pray that you combine together to become my son. This was accepted by the lords, and as Dattatreya, the Lord expounded the philosophy of the spirit soul and especially instructed Alarka, Prahlad, Yadu, Haihaya, and so on. Text 12 The seventh incarnation was Yagya, the son of Prajapati Ruchi and his wife Akuti. He controlled the period during the reign of Swayambhuvamanu and was assisted by demigods such as his son, Yama. Purport <clears throat> The administrative posts occupied by the demigods for maintaining the regulations of the material world are offered to the highly elevated pious living beings. When there is a scarcity of such pious living beings, the Lord incarnates Himself as Brahma, Prajapati, Indra, and so on, it, and takes up the charge. During the period of Swayambhuvamanu, the present period is of Vaivaswatamanu, there was no suitable living being who could occupy the post of Indra, the king of the Indraloka, heavenly planet. The Lord Himself at that time became Indra, assisted by His own sons like Yama and other demigods. Lord Yagya ruled the administration of the universal affairs. Text 13 The eighth incarnation was King Rishabha, Rishabha the son of King Nabi and his wife Merudevi. In this incarnation, the Lord showed the path of perfection which is followed by those who have fully controlled their senses and who are honored by all orders of life. Purport The society of human beings is naturally divided into eight by orders and statuses of life. The four divisions of occupation and four divisions of cultural advancement. The intelligent class, the administrative class, and the productive class, and the laborer class are the four divisions of occupation. And the student life, the householder's life, retired life, and renounced life are the four statuses of cultural advancement towards the path of spiritual realization. Out of these, the renounced order of life, or the order of sannyas, is considered the highest of all. And a sannyasi <clears throat> is constitutionally the spiritual master for all the orders and divisions. If the sannyas order also, in the sannyas order also, there are four stages of upliftment toward perfection. These stages are, these stages are called Kutichak, Bahudak, Paribrajakacharya, and Paramahamsa. The Paramahamsa stage of life is the highest <clears throat> stage of perfection. This order of life is respected by all others. Maharaj Rishabha, the Lord of King Nabi, and Meru Devi was an incarnation of the Lord, and he instructed his sons to follow the path of perfection by tapasya which sanctifies one's existence and enables one to attain the stage of spiritual happiness, which is eternal and ever-existing. Every living being is searching after happiness, but no one knows where eternal and unlimited happiness is obtainable. Foolish men seek after material sense pleasure as a substitute for real happiness. But such foolish men forget that temporary so-called happiness
foolish one, foolish men, seek after material sense pleasure as a substitute for real happiness. But such foolish men forget that temporary so-called happiness derived from sense pleasures is also enjoyed by the dogs and hogs. No animal, bird or beast is bereft of this sense pleasure. In every species of life, including the human form of life, such happiness is immensely obtainable. The human form of life, however, is not meant for such cheap happiness. The human form of the human life is meant for attaining eternal and unlimited happiness by spiritual realization. The spiritual, this spiritual realization is obtained by tapasya or undergoing voluntarily the path of penance and abstinence from, from material pleasure. Those who have been trained for abstinence in material pleasures are called dhira, or men undisturbed by the senses. Only these dhiras can accept the orders of sannyas, and they can gradually rise to the status of the paramahamsa, which is adored by all members of society. King Rishab propagated this mission and at the last stage he became completely aloof from the bodily from material from the material bodily needs which is a rare stage not to be imitated by foolish men but to be worshiped by all text 14 O brahmanas in the ninth incarnation, the Lord, prayed for by the sages, accepted the body of a king, Prithu, who cultivated the land to yield various products, and for that reason the earth was beautiful and attractive. Purport Before the advent of King Prithu, there was great havoc of maladministration due to the vicious life of the previous king, the father of Maharaj Prithu. The intelligent class of men, namely the sages and the brahmanas, not only prayed for the Lord to come down, but also dethroned the previous king. It is the duty of the king to be pious and thus look after the all-around welfare of the citizens. Whenever there is some negligence, on the part of the king in discharging his duty, the intelligent class of men must dethrone him. The intelligent class of men, however, do not occupy the royal throne because they have much more important duties for the welfare of the public. Instead of occupying the royal throne, they prayed for the incarnation of the Lord and the Lord came as Maharaj Prithu. Real intelligent men or qualified brahmanas never aspire for political posts. Maharaj Prithu excavated many products from the earth and thus not only did the citizens become happy to have such a good king, but the complete sight of the earth also became beautiful and attractive. Text 15 When there was a complete inundation after the period of the Chakrushamanu and the whole world was deep within water, the Lord accepted the form of a fish and protected Vaivaswatamanu, keeping him up on a boat. Purport According to Sripad Sridhar Swami, the original commentator on the Bhagavatam, there is not always a def devastation after the change of every manu. And yet, this inundation after the period of Chakshushamanu took place in order to show some wonders to Satyavrata. But Sri Jiva Goswami has given definite proofs from authoritative scriptures 
like the Vishnu Dharmotara, Markandeya Purana, Hari Vangsha, and so on, that there is always a devastation at the end of each and every Manu. Srila <coughs> Vishwanath Chakravarti has also supported Srila Jiva Goswami, and he, Sri Chakravarti, has also quoted from the Bhagavatamrita about this inundation after each Manu. Apart from this, the Lord, in order to show special favor to Satyavrata, a devotee of the Lord, in this particular period, incarnated himself. Text 16 The eleventh incarnation of the Lord took the form of a tortoise, whose shell served as a pivot for the Mandarachala hill, which was being used as a churning rod by the theists and atheists of the universe. Purport Once, both the atheists and the theists were engaged in producing nectar from the sea so that all of them could become deathless by drinking it. At that time, the Mandarachala hill was used as the churning rod and the shell of Lord Tortoise, the incarnation of Godhead, became the resting place, pivot, of the hill in the sea water. Text 17 In the twelfth incarnation, the Lord appeared as Danvantari, and in the thirteenth, He allured the atheists by the charming beauty of a woman and gave nectar to the demigods to drink. 18. In the fourteenth incarnation, the Lord appeared as Nushinga and bifurcated the strong body of the atheist Hiranyakashipu with his nails, just as a carpenter pierces Cain. Text 19. In the fifteenth incarnation, the Lord assumed the form of a dwarf, Brahmana, Vamana, and visited the arena of sacrifice arranged by Maharaj Bali. Although at heart he was willing to regain the kingdom of the three planetary systems, he simply asked for a donation of three steps of land. Purport The Almighty God can bestow upon anyone the kingdom of the universe from a very small beginning, and similarly he can take away the kingdom of the universe on the plea of begging a small piece of land. Text 20 In the sixteenth incarnation of the, of the Godhead, the Lord, as Brigupati, annihilated the administrative class, Chatriyas, twenty-one times, being angry with them because of their rebellion against the Brahmanas, the intelligent class. Purport the Kshatriyas, or the administrative class of men, are expected to rule the planet by the direction of the intelligent class of men, who give direction to the rulers in terms of the standard, standard Shastras, or the books of revealed knowledge. The rulers carry on the administration according to that direction. Whenever there is disobedience on the part of the Kshatriyas, or the administrative class, against the orders of the learned and intelligent brahmanas, the administrators are removed by force from the posts. An arrangement is made. An arrangement is made for better administration. Text twenty one. Thereafter, in the seventeenth incarnation of Godhead, Sri Vyasadeva appeared in the womb of Satyavati by Parashara Muni. Vyas divided the one Veda into several branches and sub-branches, seeing that the people in general were less intelligent. Purport Originally the Veda is one, but Srila Vyasadeva divided the original Veda into four, namely Sama, Yajur, Rig, and Atarva. And then again, they were explained in different branches like the Puranas and the Mahabharata. 
Vedic language and the subject matter are very difficult for ordinary men. They are understood by the highly intelligent and self-realized brahmanas. But the present age of Kali is full of ignorant men. Even those who are born by a brahmana father are in the present age no better than the shudras or the women. The twice-born men, namely the brahmanas, chatriyas and vaishyas, are expected to undergo a cultural purificatory process known as sangskaras. But because of the bad influence of the present age, the so-called members of the brahmana and other high-order families are no longer highly cultured. They are called the dvija brahmanas. They are called the dvija bandhus, or the friends and family members of the twice-born. But these dvija bandhus are classified amongst the shudras and the women. Srila Vyasadev divided the Vedas into various branches and sub-branches for the sake of the less intelligent classes, like the Dvijabandhus, Shudras, and women. Text 22 In the 18th incarnation, the Lord appeared as King Rama in order to perform such pleasing work for the demigods. Again, in the 18th incarnation, the Lord appeared as King Rama. In order to perform some pleasing work for the demigods, he exhibited, he exhibited superhuman powers by controlling the Indian Ocean and then killing the atheist king Ravana, who was on the other side of the sea. Purport The personality of Godhead Sri Rama assumed the form of a human being and appeared on the earth for the purpose of doing some pleasing work for the demigods or the administrative personalities to maintain the order of the universe. Sometimes great demons and atheists like Ran Ravana and Hiranyakashipu and many others become very famous due to advancing material civilization by the help of material science and other activities with the spirit of challenging the established order of the Lord. For example, the attempt to fly to other planets by material means is a challenge to the established order. The conditions of each and every planet are different and different classes of human beings are accommodated there for particular purposes mentioned in the codes of the Lord. But, puffed up by tiny success in material advancement, sometimes the godless materialists challenge the existence of God. Ravana was one of them, and he wanted to transport ordinary men to the planet of Indra, heaven, by material means, without consideration of the, of the necessary qualifications. He wanted a staircase to be built up directly reaching the heavenly planet so that people might not be required to undergo the routine of pious work necessary to enter that planet. He also wanted to perform other acts against the established rule of the Lord. He even challenged the authority of Sri Rama, the personality of Godhead, and kidnapped his, kidnapped his wife, Sita. Of course, Lord Rama had, had come to chastise such atheists, answering the prayer and desire of the demigods. He therefore took up the challenge of Ravana, and the complete activity is the subject matter of the Ramayana. Because Lord Ramachandra was the personality of Godhead, he exhibited superhuman activities which no human being, including the materially advanced Ravana, could perform. Lord Ramachandra prepared a royal road on the Indian Ocean with stones that floated on the water. The modern scientists have done research in the area of weightlessness, but it is not possible to bring in weightlessness anywhere and everywhere. But because weightlessness is the creation of the Lord by which He can make the gigantic planets 
fly and float in the air. He made the stones, even within this earth, to, to be weightless and prepared a stone bridge on the sea without any supporting pillar. That is the display of the power of God. Text 23. In the 19th and 20th incarnation, the Lord advented Himself as Lord Balarama and Lord Krishna in the family of Vrishni, the Yadu dynasty, and by so doing, He removed the burden of the world. Purport The specific mention of the word Bhagavan in this text indicates that Balarama and Krishna are original forms of the Lord. This will be further explained later. Lord Krishna is not an incarnation of the Purusha, as we learned from the beginning of this chapter. He is directly the original personality of Godhead, and Balarama is the first plenary manifestation of the Lord. From Baladev, the first phalanx of plenary expansions, Vasudeva, Sankrishana, Pajumna, Aniruddha and Prajumna expands and Lord Krishna is Vasudev and Baladeva is Sankrashan. Text 24 Then in the beginning of Kali Yuga the Lord will appear as Lord Buddha the son of Anjana in the province of Gaya just, to prepare, just for the purpose of of deluding those who are envious of the faithful theists. Purport This is a long purport. So we're going to stop our reading today at 7.45, right on time. And uh, it went by fast, I know, because time flies when you're having a good time. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we'll turn over the microphone to the devotees to share with us their uh, reflections and discuss this mighty subject. Hare Krishna. Uh, who is it again? Gopakanya, Hare Krishna, Gopakanya Devi Dasa. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. Blessed to be in your daily reading service to hear from you. Oh, Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to His Divine Grace. Thank you. And from Bhakta Jason. Hare Bo Bhakta Jason. Hare Krishna, Jai, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thanks for the reading and, and giving us the opportunity to hear. Well, it's my duty and my pleasure. Hare Krishna. Rati Manjari says Jai Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Rati. From Gopal Roy. Hare Krishna, Gopal Roy, finally, you're, you're back. Hare Krishna. He says, Dear Maharaj, thank you again for another wonderful reading, your servant. Well, thank you for your wonderful ears and heart, Gopal Roy. You're so, uh, yeah, pure, and uh, you repeat the messages in the Bhagavatam to others very nicely. And therefore, the Welsh Yatra is flourishing. Hare Krishna. And from Bhakta Rupa. Hare Bo Bhakta Rupa. He says, Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. All glories to His Divine Grace, Sri the Prabhupada. Thanks for reading this evening, Maharaj. It struck me when Prabhupada described that material so called happiness and material so called distress are all ultimately meant for distress only. Yes. That was struck to me also. What does that mean? 
it means that what happiness in the material world is, isn't really happiness. It's actually a temporary cessation of the distress by some artificial means. And it cannot last. The happiness that comes from uh, air conditioning systems in the summer, sprinkling systems in the... Anyway, uh, nice fire, fire, fireplaces in the winter. Uh, they don't really relieve the cold of the winter or the heat of the summer. They're always there, and therefore material existence is, is the world of dualities, and therefore we are always uh, confused and struggling. Only if we get out of the dualities of material existence will we actually be happy. And that comes from absorbing ourselves in Krishna consciousness. And the easiest way to absorb ourselves in Krishna consciousness is to chant the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And the glories of the Lord are given in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and other uh, revealed scriptures. But especially those. From Subarao Raja Gopalan. Subarao Raja Gopal, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Maharaj, for reading. And especially, we are fortunate to join on Ekadashi Day. Question What is the difference between plenary expansions and other incarnations, avatars? Thanks. Well, it's too simplistic. You're drawing a line between two categories, plenary expansions and other incarnations. But as we heard in the purport, uh, the incarnations of the Lord always have a particular purpose uh, to perform. And uh, what you're talking about, the difference between the plenary expansions and the incarnations uh, is not a complete question because all of, the, all of the expansions and incarnations of Krishna that are plenary expansions, plenary means full, their expansions of Krishna's uh, personality but those expansions don't show all of the qualities of the, the original uh, personality of Godhead Krishna. So the difference is actually subtle in the sense that all of them have potential potent power, full potent potential power like Krishna. But the ones that, uh, but each one of them exhibits a different amount or different kind of uh, the Lord's potencies for a particular purpose. And the closer that uh, those incarnations come to be the full personality of God, meaning Ramachandra, you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, these are full incarnations of Krishna, they show more of Krishna's uh, power and personality, the varieties of, person, of, of Krishna's personality. Some of them are Leela avatars that we heard of this. Some of them are Leela avatars. Some of them are empowered living beings like Narada and Vyasadeva meant to perform a specific... Uh, they would be jiva souls, but jiva souls who are empowered to do something that only the Supreme Personality of Godhead could do. Or 
Only the Supreme Personality of Godhead could make stones float in the water like we heard Ramachandra do, for instance. Only uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead could distribute Krishna Prema freely to anyone and everyone, as Lord Chaitanya did, even though he didn't appear as a he, he, even though he appeared as a devotee of himself, he was the full, uh, he was Krishna, full, original personality of Godhead. So anyway, those are some of the divisions, but you can read about that in the, in, in the Srimad, in the, in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, especially in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya to Sanatana Goswami in the Madhya Lila and also in the Adi Leela in the fifth chapter there's an exp- a, a, a exposition of the differences between the different uh, forms of the Lord and different expansions of the Lord and what the actual differences are so fifth chapter Adi Leela uh, chapters 21 to 24 of the 20 to 24 of the Madhya Leela they explain all these things in depth. So to answer that question in depth is not possible uh, now. We have not enough time. But you can get the answer in those books. All of the answers to all questions, as far as I know and have seen, are contained in Srila Prabhupada's translations and purports of these books. Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Hare Krishna. Rati Manjari. Hare Bo Rati. She says, Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. What stood out for me is that the Lord cares for us so much that He cares to come down again and again in so many original and various <coughs> incarnations whose only aim is to call back the conditioned souls back home, back to Godhead. His love is steady and true. Absolutely. Steady, true, and unlimited. Thank you for that reflection. That's very nice. I also find it of interest that the desires of the atheists to challenge the established authority of the Lord and his rules have remained the same over time, with the poignant examples of Ravana's staircase to heaven and the mechanical attempts of planetary travel of the modern-day scientists. Peculiar how similar these two are. Would you please elaborate? Elaborate? Yeah, the atheists are uh, foolish, ignorant, and um, overambitious. They want to become God. They don't believe in God, and they, and still they want to become God. Therefore, they'll do such stupid things. As Ravana, as, as Ravana, and Hiranyakashipu, they want to control. They want to own. They want to enjoy. Everyone in the material world wants to do those things. That's why we came here in, in the first place. But these personalities are, you know, big demons. They're bigger demons with bigger ambitions, and they want to actually become the controller of the universe. When, when Ravana, for instance, uh, took over, uh, you know, and Hiranyakashipu also took over, but particularly Ravana, and he put people in place, the, the administrators of the universe, he put his own men in those posts. You know, like the modern politicians, you know. <laughs> They're small-time demons. But the principle is the same. All of us are trying to own and control, you know, and enjoy the material energy that does not belong to us. That's the the real similarity. None of the energy belongs to us. If it did, we could keep it. 
but we can't keep it. Everyone must leave the body and go to another body and try the same business in different ways according to their qualifications and desires. Hare Krishna. So we should, as devotees in this Kali Yuga, we should be very careful not to embrace uh, conflicts that are dividing the human society into you know more and more divisions of friends and enemies the only enemy is our own uh, lust the lust within us to enjoy and own and control the, the, the energy of the Lord that's the only real enemy This lust is the is the destroyer of knowledge and self realization. And therefore it is the uh, enemy. It burns like fire and uh, burns the, the, the conditioned souls. So no one can become Krishna by any amount of material, uh, you know, attempts or material uh, acquisition of any power or any amount of wealth or any amount of uh, talent or ability, power. We are happy when we are serving the Lord who is the actual owner and controller and enjoyer of everything. And that's a very hard concept for a materialistic person to chew and digest. That you, you can't become God. <laughs> Absolutely. It's not possible. Hare Krishna. Matthew says, thank you for explaining this point and bringing it home to all of us. Hare Krishna, my pleasure and my duty. Anandamurti, Hare Bol, Anandamurti. Dear Guru Maharaj and all devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you so much for today's reading. I heard so many times, as so many incarnations, the Lord appeared in this earth in many places and other places. So I felt this earth is very much purified by these transcendental lotus feet of the Lord. Sometimes the Lord appeared also as Indra or other demigods when he does not find it an appropriate one. He is helping us throughout many ways. Hare Krishna. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. That was a lovely realization, a lovely reflection. Thank you. And from Gauranga Gopal. Hare Bo Gauranga Gopal. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you for reading tonight. Love hearing about all of Krishna's avatars. Can't wait to rediscover them with you once more. Hare Krishna. The feeling is mutual. I'm so excited by beginning the Bhagavatam again, knowing that we're going to read it all the way through, every word. It's so ecstatic. Every time we hear it, you know, every time we hear it, it gets better. This is the proof. The holy name of the Lord, you can chant and chant and chant. And if you're honest and sincere, you'll never become tired of it. Never get saturated. Never want to go on to something else. Same with reading the Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and all of the other literatures given by our previous acharyas. 
and particularly at this time and place, in this time time we were in, living in, Srila Prabhupada came as a Shaktivesh avatar to deliver these books. And he said, he told Ramaswar in 1976, maybe it was, that these books would be the law books for the next 10,000 years. So that means it's not that because they're not the law books yet for the world that they won't be, but they're going to be the law books of people's spiritual lives. They already are for a growing number of people, millions of people actually. And, uh, and it will inc com continue to increase. So take shelter of the Bhagavatam. It is not different than Krishna. It is not different than the holy name of Krishna. So hopefully the reading of the Bhagavatam every day like this, even though we're only doing it for a short period of time, but still we're doing it regularly every day, which is a big deal. Nasta prayusha bhadveshu nityam bhagavata sevya bhagavat uttamashloke bhaktir bhavadi naishtiki. This is how we get to steadiness in devotional service. Bhaktir bhavadi naishtiki. Nishta. You want to become fixed in Krishna consciousness? Become fixed in hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam and trying to understand the Srimad Bhagavatam and going deeper and deeper into uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the way forward, the way out of material existence. Hare Krishna. So thank you again, everyone, for all your lovely reflections and discussion. Uh, it comes to life when there's discussions. That's why we can't actually properly understand unless we hear in the association of devotees. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Samabeda Bhakta Brinda ki jai. Gaur Prem Anandi Hari Hari Bo. Thanks very much. See you tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic. The ex ever expanding glories of the Lord, the Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. See you tomorrow. Hare Bhagavatam.